Um, I'm very excited today for uh, the salon series lecture because the future of footwear, which is the focus of the new exhibition, is with kids today. And I know this is a really important um, topic for our guests, Chris Dixon and his daughter, Jade. So um, before I invite them on, I'm just gonna give a little background. <clears throat> so Chris is from Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina, an alumni of Harding University and Pencil Academy. In addition to being the founder and creative director of Constant Development, Chris is also a footwear designer at Timberland with the Advanced Concepts Energy Group, I guess. Is, you can correct me, Chris. Um, he moved to, uh, to Oregon from North Carolina after winning the World Sneaker Competition or Championship in 2017 and has been on a mission to create with a purpose. With faith, optimistic vision, perseverance, and a strong support system, he is able to see multiple dreams and goals come to life, creating tools that will help people get a head start in the creative space is a balance with him creating, it is a balance with him creating new products for the world. He is here for positivity and I would argue, so is his daughter, Jade. She herself is a seasoned uh, footwear designer um, and uh, we will get to that in just a bit. But why don't you join us, uh, Chris and Jade? Hello. I'm gonna unmute myself. How are you doing okay. today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. And um, I, I really do want to thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jade, uh, for taking time out of your day off from school uh, to, to actually do, um, to do this uh, talk with you. So my first question, and I have a few of them. And I just want to tell everybody how this is going to work is that you and, uh, well, I guess, actually, wait, you're going to do a presentation. See, I'm so excited to get to my <laughs> questions. I just jump ahead. It's all um, good. So you're going to do a presentation and then I have some questions and then we are happy to take questions from the audience. I just want to note for the audience that if you can put your questions in the Q&A, function as opposed to the chat, then I will easily be able to read the questions, give them to you guys. And then um, at the top of the hour at four o'clock, uh, I will formally end this event. But if we still have questions, Chris and Jade have very kindly said that they would stay on to continue to answer questions. So thank you so much for that. Okay, well, without further ado, um, I will let you do your presentation. <laughs> Oh, so, so thank you again, Elizabeth. There we go. So today's affirmation is um, my thoughts become reality. That is why I choose to think positively. Um, and I think that's a good thing to do. Knowing 70% of the things we think are negative, it's always good to have a positive thought um, before we go out our day. So just wanted to share that before we got going. Okay, so, <laughs> um, you know, Elizabeth gave a background, um, Chris Dixon, and I'm a designer dad. Um, you know, I have a family of, of super, super humans, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> My wife, Alicia, she's also in the footwear industry. She works at Converse. Um, and I have two amazing children, um, Jay and, and Julius. Um, and, you know, we're, we're a team. Um, and without Alicia, I just want to give her a quick shout out. Like, we appreciate you. We love you for all the things that you do for us. Um, this, this journey and this, this story wouldn't wouldn't be nothing without you. So, so thanks for all that you do. <laughs> Next slide. So um, I kind of want to just go back to, to how I kind of fell in love with sneakers um, and being from Fayetteville, North Carolina, you know, basketball and, and the, you know, the basketball community was, was life, you know, ball is life. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when I was in seventh grade, I couldn't, I couldn't afford all the you know, 90s is when like a lot of the pinnacle signature shoes were coming out. Um, and, you know, I wasn't able to get those those drops every Saturday. So, you know, East Bay was my, the Bible and homeroom. <laughs> and those were like all the, the times we had to, to kind of dream about what shoes we wanted and, and couldn't get. So what I started doing was drawing the ones that I couldn't get. And, you know, that was my satisfaction. And it started becoming a hobby and didn't know it was a job. Um, so. Mm -hmm. You know, my dream was to just make it an NBA so I can just buy all the shoes that I want. <laughs> so 
this is a young Chris Chris on the on the left. Um, I went to Jack Brett High School, um, and that was my senior year. And then I went went on to to play at uh, a junior college in, in West Plains, Missouri. Um, I was a high flyer, so you kind of see see me when I was in um, at the desk. <laughs> Um, and then Harding University is where I graduated from and, and got my bachelor's degree in, in graphic design. And at the end of my, my journey, you know, I, I had a lot of injuries. And um, basically, you know, I chose, um, you know, design path over basketball um, just because I, I, I suffered so many injuries. And, and I had an opportunity. Um, the opportunity was to, to work with Serena Williams. Um, from, wow. Yeah, so I, I had my first design. A uh, job coming out of college with with Serena, you know, working with her HSN line, and we, she was starting a, a high fashion. She kind of showed me what what fashion was all about, which you know we'll get into a little bit later of, of why I kind of start stepping into the high heel room. Um, but that was short lived, just because you know her HSN line was doing so well that her team didn't want to go with you know high end. So um, next slide. A uh, new opportunity came, and this was my introduction to um, the footwear industry. Um, so Future Soul was a, a design competition for high school and college students. Um, and since and I still had like two classes left um, to graduate, <laughs> I was eligible. Um, and the age was, the age limit was 25. And that year, 2010, is, is when I had Jade. Um, so we had Jade and, you know, Jay was such a great baby. She used to just sit on my lap and and watch me sketch and and stay up to stay up with me late hours. Um, <laughs> she used to fall in my sleep just watching me draw, and you know that I think she was my she was my lucky charm because I ended up winning that that uh that competition. Um, at the top left, you kind of see um, that was my submission for to get in the in the finals, which was a a design that was based off of Dwayne Wade because he was signed with Jordan at the time. And um, the, the one below that was the phase 23, uh, which was my winning design that was inspired by track and field and connecting the, the track and field with, with basketball, uh, with sprinting and, and high jump, all those different um, events that goes into basketball. I wanted to kind of connect that with, with, uh, with uh, track, sorry. Um, the cool thing about this one was, so I had my first like magazine opportunity with Soul Collector and I got a call from Dwayne Edwards who was um, running this event. And basically he was like, um, did you have anything to do with this shoe? And you know, that's the shoe that you see on the, on the right. And no, so this shoe was knocked off by a Chinese factory. And unfortunately that shoe didn't, that shoe didn't make the market. <laughs> so this is the first time like a uh, uh, a sneaker that is not even a real sneaker gets knocked off and you know so so Dwayne kind of just invites me to the Jordan Brand Classic game it was just like last two weeks at at Jordan mm -hmm. kind of just shared the vision of pencil mm -hmm. the the vision and and the story that he was telling me was so vivid I thought it was a place that already existed um, and. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can I come? And he's like, yeah, sure. When I when I get it up and running. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh that was my first like, you know, understanding of what vision was, and and Dwayne kind of sh shared that. So this vision came to life at, after he left, you know, Jordan to to kind of find talent, um, to kind of help the the design community. And um, this was my first um, class. So pencil prep was my first class. Um, it was the smallest pencil class of, of 10. We got this class nicknamed by um, one of the legends in the game, Wilson Smith, called mm -hmm. our class Pen 10. So <laughs> 10 was, was our crew. Um, a lot of these individuals you, you probably could recognize um, that are doing a lot of great things in the industry. But in this class, basically, Dwayne just showed us you know, the process of footwear design. You know, introduced us to design professionals and showed us the process. Um, and we gained a really strong connection in this class. And I told him my dreams and, and all the, the cool things I was doing with that I did with Serena and how I wanted to kind of take that on my own. Um, mm -hmm. This cool idea having a dual hill. Um, and he really liked the thought. And you know, I was trying to you know merge the sneaker aspect into 
high hill to solve a, a problem, which was comfort in high hills. So with that said, I was, um, you put on the first competition, uh, Future of Footwear. <laughs> he invited over 20 students across the world um, to um, compete for an award um, that could possibly get their shoe into Zappos. And I was going against a lot of students that were from design academies, um, CCS, um, art uh, institute, like a lot of trained industrial design students. So that made me like really kind of focus in and try to try to be, you know, first in the room and try to, you know, sketch more than I, I would possibly, you know, sketch when I'm just randomly doing something. But um, I was just surrounded by a lot of um, inspiring individuals, um, probably the most talented class I was in. Um, and I got to work on the, the High Hill project and I ended up, you know, making that, um, making that project to the finals, which was in uh, the magic show in Vegas. So that was a really cool experience because Dwayne took all 10 of the finalists and he went to China himself, him and Karen Morris. Um, and they, they got samples made for all of us. Now, I don't know if you, if you understand the process of design, but <laughs> 10 tech packs, you know, 10 factory visits, um, that's yeah. a lot of work. And Dwayne yeah. did that for us, for us to realize our concepts and it changed our whole perspective at yeah. that show. Um, so this really changed my perspective because, you know, this was a voting situation and, you know, people were asking and coming up to me asking for purchase orders. And yeah. I was like, yo, this, <laughs> this is only <laughs> vote. But it put a, a drop the seed in my mind that I can actually sell something I created myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that really sparked, um, you know, my ambition to to start this um, this design. So this is the process of of what I created um, at Future of Footwear, and basically it was inspired by arches and columns um, for stability of of high heels and stilettos, um, creating that dual heel, and then adding um, poron and EVA to the ball of the foot for maximum mm -hmm. comfort, um, like a sneaker. And then having the story of a diamond lifestyle um, inspired by Sade, my favorite <laughs> artist of all time. <laughs> um, that diamond lifestyle is just a, a luxurious lifestyle. Um, but when you think about luxury you, in, in high heels, you don't never think about comfort, like true luxury. Mm -hmm. Luxury is comfortable. And that, that was my take on it. And that, that's how I pull it all together with this story. Um, it didn't stop. So I continued um, pursuing this idea and you know, I had some failures with um, trying to get this off the ground. Um, I had a, a partner that, that believed in me, um, put some money behind this idea. And you know, we tried to do this in, in Brazil. It didn't work. Um, it took five years to actually get this off the ground. In between, um, you know, Dwayne was helping me like figure out some things as well as Suzette Henry, Miss Suzette Henry, um, <laughs> taking, me to, taking me to Lennon Pele, showing me how to shop a material show. And then, you know, I had two amazing uh, people I worked with in, in Italy for, the, for my first run, um, Celio and, and Mary. Um, the most, one of the most, I guess it was the most exciting and frustrating time of my life. Um, being in Italy and knowing the, the shoemaking experience was very traditional and I was trying to come in and innovate um, was really hard. Um, so um, to kind of speed the story up, you know, we, we really did something special in that factory. It was called Fly Shoes. And we created a 10 style collection with, um, with the, you know, the styles that you see. And my first, my first design, I named it after my, my firstborn was Jade. Um, that shoe sold for $700. So I, I sold my very first shoe for $700. And that was a experience of its own. Um, knowing that, you know, I created something on my own, but also um, the fact that I, as a black man, was selling luxury um, in, in this space and also innovating. So it was, it was really special. Um, the, the cool thing about this, um, it, it, 
it was supported by, again, Dwayne Edwards. Um, he allowed me to use the space at, at Magic Show, right where I, I won that, that competition, to share my collection. And uh, that was one of those moments where, you know, I never got a, a, a thing about mentors is they never give, comp, uh, sorry, they never give compliments, um, but they give, uh, give critiques. Mm -hmm. This is the first time when I brought my, my sample bag in that Dwayne gave me, you know, a compliment and it meant the, it meant the most to me. Um, and he's seeing how, how much work I put into, you know, creating this line and um, you see my growth, um, like three years of, of just grinding and, and never giving up. And, you know, we had, we had a lot of, a lot of shine and a lot of highlights within this, this project. Um, getting getting noticed by Vogue Italia and, and Fast Company for you know these uh, these high heels that were that were before it's time or I guess ahead of it's time in my, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that was that was um, that was that journey of of creating the Christopher Court collection. Um, the one thing I really learned about this, um, which was the saddest part, and it 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 kind of it kind of sent me into a dark place, but um, knowing that I can't do everything myself. Um, this, this was a passion project and it turned into a business, but you can't run a business by yourself when you're doing designing. You need a team and that's what I didn't know. Um, and that was the lesson that I learned from, from Christopher Coy is you can't do it all. Even if you have a vision, you have to, you have to delegate and you have to get people to believe um, in what you're doing and have this big goal and mission. So, you know, Christopher Coy was discontinued. Um, and you know, I was I was really bummed about it. Uh, I was bummed about it for a long time. Um, in between that, in between Christopher Coy, um, you know, I was still like I was still working, and Dwayne was still putting on competitions. So it was just my way. Um, so this was like right in between, you know, going back and forth to to uh, Italy. Um, I I won another ch uh, design challenge, um, FM platform, um, that was. That was really cool because it just helped me to learn, you know, storytelling within within design, not just sneakers, not within lifestyle. But um, this was with Nina Shoes, and I was highlighted by the vice president um, of, you know, innovative thinking. And you know, this design was a wedding shoe that that could be um, very versatile. So it's almost like a veil coming down the aisle as a mule, and then you know. After the you know after the wedding you know you put that up and show like the diamond um, heel the stiletto and that was just like the story and I captured a lot um, of, of eyes and attention. I'm gonna sip this water real quick. So yeah, that was the journey. Um, in 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 this class, it really showed me the 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 thought of actually making something, which was the biggest challenge for me. I was getting my hands dirty and actually trying to create what I, what I sketched because I was very good at sketching um, and it's still a weakness, um, but I'm getting better. So I would like to move on to, um, so right around the time, um, like Christopher Coy was, was I guess, idle. Um, I, needed, I needed marketing. That was the biggest thing. I, I felt like I had the best idea in the world, but I had no marketing. And then World Sneaker uh, Championship popped up and the winning was $20,000 in your own shoe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, I didn't want to design anymore. I was through with design. I was so bummed out. Uh -oh. And I had a call with, you know, my sister and, you know, she was like, this is the opportunity to get the money that you need to keep going. So, excuse me, I wrote that down. I wrote to myself that I'm going to win this championship. I'm going to be world sneaker championship in 2017 nothing's gonna stop me. And so I had this whole vision of what a creative would need and want. So that was the brief, was to create something that um, was a pencil, uh, for a pencil consumer. And all pencil people or students are creative. So I wanted to kind of hone in on that and kind of tell the story of the dojo, which is the pencil studio. Um, that, that nickname was coined by one of our uh, so brothers Eric, um, and that that name stuck because Dwayne is like the 
the master of the dojo. Sensei. <laughs> sensei, there you go. Sensei of the dojo, we're the students to come in and learn and, and, and get our skills up. And, you know, his discipline and accountability level is at, at, at the tip top. So it was February and I want to celebrate that story. So um, this was my way of, of you know, shining the light on, you know, the first, uh, first black man to create a footwear academy um, and then kind of share like the, the different things about, about this, this space. Um, it was 64 contestants in this one, um, plus the people that didn't make it, but you know, I, I made it to the championship and I end up, um, I end up winning with, with the votes from, you know, all my loved ones, friends and family in Fayetteville and, and all over the place, man, they really pulled for me on this one. Um, and again, I was, I was really depressed and, and I was in a dark, dark place, but this competition pulled me out of that. And it made me want to keep designing. And this is the, the story I was just sharing, just like the, the whole process of, you know, finding the consumer. Um, shout out to Desmond who let me um, have space in his in his studio downtown Fayetteville, and didn't charge me a penny, um, and let me create this this shoe. So if you're out there, Desmond, I really appreciate you for for opening your doors for me. Um, and this was just the process, um, the the original dojo, and then the China um, pencil China black and red colorway, and then you know a J Cole KOD colorway because I had to shout out the you know, the king of the ville. <laughs> um, so this is just the process. And I got an opportunity to go to Portugal with Duane and with Chaya to actually develop this. And not only one, I started to develop a collection. Um, that's where Constant Development was born. And my thought about Constant Development was, you know, I didn't come the pathway of, um, the pathway of industrial design, I kind of, came through just learning by, by doing. Um, and that was, you know, my thought about me continuing to develop as a, as a designer. Um, it's, it's never an ending. I'm never going to perfect it. I'm always going to develop. Um, so I want to kind of get into, um, after, you know, I won World Sneaker, um, Dwayne offered me a, a position as a special project designer. Um, so I got a chance to spend, you know, four or five years with, with Dwayne um, working under him and you know we packed up everything and we moved um, right after the lace-up show I was a part of that incredible experience and you know after that we moved to Oregon um, we didn't have anybody in Oregon it was just us um, so you know you know my kids used to come and, and hang out at Pencil with us so I think Jay can kind of speak to this slide um, if you want to go for it Jay yes yeah, so um <laughs> basically shows my entire process of like how I designed and what I came up to doing. I'm starting off with just seeing all the many things in pencil, like all the laces and fabrics, stuff like that. And at a young age, being able to have all these tools to draw um, with my dad. My dad is kind of like, we work together, he sketches it and I color it. It's um, one of our favorite things to do together. And I had all these opportunities at a young age, so my dad taught me how to design shoes um, and how to uh, have a story and pick from it by with the colors. Um, so with that, I uh, kept going and um, I used pencil and um, in lab in, in lab, in lab. Um, with um, Miss Suzette and Anna to um to mentor me to keep going and keep designing especially with color yes yeah, so jay me and jay had this uh this thing where when i come in they just take jay and you know i didn't know what jay was up to <laughs> this who's that would have jay like you know sorting out color chips and, and stuff like that where jay was getting a lot of experience with um with color um and you know didn't know that was going to be her thing, but that's what she started gravitating to. And, you know, getting her familiar with the Cintiq, you know, some of the things that I won in, in these competitions. Um, and, you know, that was her thing. And I know I, I didn't want to push her into footwear design. I, want, I wanted her to be a part of design, but I didn't want her to like, like hate it because I pushed her. So, you know, thank you, Anna, and thank you, Miss um, Suzette and Jenna for, you know, just 
you know, being there for Jade and showing her, you know, these things around uh, the MLab. Um, so kind of kind of going forward, um, we didn't know all the things that she was learning was, you know, going to uh, going to come full circle with an opportunity. And, you know, that's that's what we're looking at now. So, Jay, if you want to if you want to speak to this one. So um, at the uh, left on the top, um, that was the design that my dad did and I decided to color it. Um, this was really fun and I picked the colors from all the different leaves. Um, that was one of my favorites. I really like that one. And then on the bottom left, there is a colorway inspired by Animal Crossing characters. Um, some of <laughs> uh, the top one represents like, I kind of thought of it as um, Neapolitan ice cream. I love ice cream and sweets in general. <laughs> and then the bottom one is kind of um, meringue pie or key lime pie. And then, um, then during quarantine, my dad found the Future Shoe Designer Nova Kids um, competition and kind of pushed, not pushed me, but really <laughs> did do it because he saw how much talent I had um, and, you know, ability to do it. So um, in the bottom, you can see it, how many um, times or how many tries and practice I had. Um, which was really fun, but coming to the end of the competition, last day, um, turn in day, we realized <laughs> that we had printed out the wrong shoe for it. So um, it was definitely like a crunch time, making sure <laughs> I had like, um, make, making sure I had all the whole plan done and just had my mindset on one thing because you can only turn in one. Um, we realized that Merrill is a big um, outdoor company, yeah. so we just to pick something from outdoors. And my favorite thing outdoors is flowers, so that's what the final design was really um, spotlighted on. It was yeah, really fun. We turned that one in. We turned that one in at the nick of time. That was like <laughs> that was the craziest time. It's just like we didn't know we were doing the wrong one, and yeah. then coming to find out, you know, that wasn't the right template, and then Jay just you know, hustling and figuring out what colors that she wanted to do and, and executing. And, you know, Jay was really um, apprehensive of, of doing this competition. And, you know, Alicia and I, we, we really wanted her to just, just share and, and show some courage. And, and that's what, exactly what she did. And, and this was the outcome. Um, Jay won the competition. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it gave me a lot of a big confidence boost. Um, knowing that I could walk down the hallways in school and just be like, yeah, I did that shoe, or yes, I did that colorway. So I thought it was really cool. It definitely gave me the confidence boost to share my art um, because I do have a lot of sketchbook filled with my old art and new. Um, so yeah, it just helped me share a lot of the things I've done over the years of learning from my dad and from the, pen, from the pencil of the dojo. So, um, yeah. <laughs> nice, Jay. And, and what, what Jay is being so humble about is, you know, Jay is is really um, a, a great storyteller. And you know, when it's just me and her, and she kind of give the details about, you know, why the blocking is where it is, and where, you know, why the, the strap is blue, and you know that that crazy, that's about the sky and the yeah. sunflowers and. You know, just her ability to storytell is, is incredible at a young age. Um, she blew us away. And, you know, this was one of the best sellers at Merrill. And we were really super proud of, of what, what Jay came up with. Um, and, you know, during quarantine, you know, we didn't have a lot of community because um, everybody was by themselves and to themselves. So, you know, just thinking about what Jay experienced, um, you know, it, it gave us some time. Um, so I want to kind of talk about constant development a little bit, um, which, you know, we're on a mission um, to co cultivate untapped talent um, to expand the creative community. And at that time during quarantine, basically, you know, I was working on a book um, and it was just a sketchbook. I used to go to the coffee shop all the time and hang out with Ian Williams with Deathstock. And uh, we used to kind of just go back and forth on, on what a, a template book would need. And, you know, I always wanted to do that, but, um, you know, at the time it was really, it was really hard to like just focus in because we we're going through so many like changes at Pencil. So we were, uh, we kind of, um, 
you know, Pistol went on a, a break, um, so to say. Um, and, you know, we had we had time to to figure out what we want to do. So I want to focus in on constant development where I, where I you know, picked up where I, where I stopped, um, you know, during a world sneaker and, and really think about community. So some of the, our pillars uh, for constant development is cultural diversity. And we kind of seen like, you know, uprising during that time with a lot of, you know, black and brown uh, diversity issues within the sneaker industry. Um, and what I experienced at Pencil was one of the best cultural diversity experience with, where we had, uh, you know, our design director was, was from Thailand and our developer was from Mexico. Everybody was just having a different perspective and it made our team so dynamic. So that's one thing I kind of took from, you know, my time at Pencil that I wanted to create for myself was just having cultural diversity. And so everyone could, could kind of share their input on what culture looks like. Um, having crazy devotion, kind of what Jay experienced with her with her mural competition, um, being devoted to your craft and also having courage to share, um, which is a lot, um, you know, to ask for from an introvert. <laughs> so creative disruption, that's always something that's needed within our industry, uh, something that's going to create, you know, conversation and then conscious design, designing with a purpose, designing with, um, you know, problem solving in mind, and also, uh, you know, just having all these things encapsulated into a brand, it gives us purpose um, to, to push the pre uh, creative community forward. Um, so when I was a kid, I learned how to sketch by comic, comic strips. So I always wanted to be, that before design, I wanted to be a, a illustrator and a, and a comic, comic book artist. Um, so this idea of little retro came from, um, you know, my son looking exactly like me um, <laughs> as a kid. Um, so I didn't want to name him Junior, so I gave him his own name, but I just told my wife, that's my, ret <laughs> that's my retro. <laughs> so um, Little Retro is the thought of, you know, giving back to my younger self. You know, imagine if I would have had Dwayne Edwards at, at, at 11 or 12 years old, uh, where would I be now, you know? so. You know, my thought is to give back to my younger self and have these different um, different stories that kids can relate to as a creator. Um, so that's what that's what Little Retro is kind of going through now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is is finding out he has a glow, and the glow is the ability to create um, sneakers or being able to draw really well. <laughs> so that is something I want to incorporate in the books and. You know, hard work with, you know, Melvin Melcher, um, my, my ace, you know, has, has jumped in the, in the trenches with me to, to start this book and, and get it developed to where we have it today. Um, we did our first, um, I guess, I'm going to say community-based, like, sketch program during Sneaker Week, PDX, and we did that with Dead Stock, and we got an opportunity to see what that community could look like, and it was, it was super... It's super inspiring knowing we had people all the way from six years old to kindergarten. And, you know, to know, you know, people just wanted to, to be in a community and create and just and share ideas. And, you know, we took that experience and we built on it. So we created our OG um, footwear design sketching, intro to footwear design sketching. Um, and we wanted to really, really capture like storytelling of little retro meeting deeds and, and getting, getting the hang of his his superpower, um, his superpower meaning drawing, drawing sneakers. Um, so yeah, that was that was the creative discovery tools. And you know, last year, you know, I was introduced to two fine human beings, uh, Dawn in Atlanta. Shout out to them. Um, you know, they gave me an opportunity to present. You know, what this book was about and, and what we're on a mission to do. And it was just it was just special how. Timberland's mission aligned with the constant development mission. And we created an organic relationship and we started our first pilot last year, um, creating a program in, in Brooklyn, New York with, with 25 students and sharing, you know, the this the creative um, discovery tools with them. So inside the book is a comic strip, instructions as far as like learning basic vocabulary and how to draw and how to be inspired. And then just a bunch of templates that's high, low, mid. Um, that that people can work with. Um, 
just any time, any level, um, any age. I think it's just a great tool. Um, again, this is this is our small team, um, including Jade as our color specialist. She's truly um, special because she can reach and, and touch kids on a level that you know Melvin and I cannot. And you know, you know, Melvin, you know, takes care of the brand education. He's the director on that end, and he does way more than than acts. He just jumped in and this he's just a special human being. Um, you know, being from Virginia, went to school in um, NC State, and he studied industrial design. So Melvin is a is a true educator. I, I call him a professor, and he just he just brings it all together. So all the things that's in the book that is more of a educational um, sense. That's that's all Melvin, and you know, you know, I have this vision of how it all comes together. So we're we're a dynamic um, trio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, this is the process of of how some of our um, our Zoom calls work. Um, hopefully, one day we'll have you know these programs in person. Um, we're coming up on our fifth one. Uh, we just ended with. Uh, a school in White Plains, New York. We had a handful of talent. Um, amazing. Yes. Yeah, so, you know it was really cool. I met like some really cool people and I made a lot of friends. So. That's very <laughs> important, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we had 80% of, of our class was, was girls. Um, <laughs> we know, you know, the diversity issue is really bad under uh, 0.1, something like that. And that's just our mission to, to get these, these kids to understand their creative careers, um, and they can start early, just like just like in sports. Um, you start getting your mind wrapped around the process, mm -hmm. and seeing people that actually do it that look like you, it, it's all the difference. So, again, this is kind of you know Jay's Jay's work, and uh, her sharing. You can kind of speak to this. I've been talking too much. Oh, this is just <laughs> um, Kay Arnold um, design or colorway that I did um, during the class. It was really fun. My dad just handed me this figure. We call them desk buddies. But he handed me this figure and told me to do something out of it. So when I pull, um, whether it's a character or not, sometimes I like to be really specific about where I put the colors to show the actual character, or I show main parts about the character. Um, but for this one, I just put it on like the character itself. So for the um, so for the top part of it, um, I, it was kind of like his hair. I love his hair because it's a little crazy, <laughs> kind of like mine. But um, then he has his uh, health, which I think is really funny. And yeah, I just pulled all the characters. Um, and then I didn't use the exact green because Arnold isn't perfect. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to show that in the design itself, some um, type of personality issue, not just the coach. Moving football head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, and, and I'm going to share this quote, um, one of my favorite quotes by Jackie Robinson. Um, you know, after after working and spending five years with, with, with Pencil, I knew that, you know, design was fun and it was something that I will always have. Um, but it's a void that would never be filled with, with having the opportunity to work with so many different programs, so many different students. I realized, you know, um, this quote like was right on point. A life is not important except the impact it has on other lives. And that's by Jackie Robinson. And that, that feeds our soul. Um, that gives us purpose. And, you know, the balance of, you know, the hustle and bustle of designing shoes and making shoes versus uplifting a community and, and helping people on their journey from you know your mistakes and your bumps in the road to help their their um, their journey smoother is 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 purpose and um, and that's kind of our, our story so um, <laughs> well, thank you and and honestly um, Elizabeth I met you at, at at that time where we were creating this first book and you were super interested in and now we we have a book um, that's 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 in your museum so exactly it's for sale <laughs> in the museum. <laughs> We made it happen. So, so thank you so much for you know your um, your support, and you know we we also have we have we have your book here too. Um, <laughs> so Good. you know that, that's what community is all about: is sharing and, and uplifting each other. So we thank you for having us, 
and uh you know that's that's what we got yes. <laughs> hey well and now i've got lots of questions and i know um people in the audience do as well but first i do want to say that the reason i was excited about this book is because it is it's not just a a, a book that allows you to i don't know sort of gloss over the top of footwear design it's so thoughtful and i think the other thing too that it does is it makes it seem possible you know i think when you walk into a shoe store who the heck knows how to make a pair of shoes right right very very few people right um and so i think that this demystifies de demystifies um some of that work and it really is so it's just so well done. Congratulations. Thank you. I think it's I an excellent tool. Nah, I really appreciate it. It's something I, I, I wish I had when I was a kid. And, you mm -hmm. know, I can't give myself all the credit because Melvin came in and he really put his, his sparkles on it. <laughs> just well, make I mean, it you know, as I said, like one of the, the points that I'm trying to make in this exhibition is that the future of footwear is with kids right now. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, you identified that if you had a Dwayne Edwards or actual Dwayne Edwards um, to, you know, to help you when you were Jade's age, where would you be now? Like, where is Jade going to be exactly. when she's your age because of this, um, these steps that you're helping her take. Right. And other kids through these kinds of programs. So I thought that for Community Weekend, Doing the salon with you guys would be really smart because I think it's you're extremely inspiring. Oh, uh, thank you wow. so much. <laughs> but now, having said that, I have some hard questions. All right. You ready? Okay. Um, so my first question is because, of course, I started out working on the history of the high heel. Is do you still have your dual heel to show us? Oh yeah, I have a. I have a, okay, and, and you know, I have a, also a, maybe a controversial question. You made claims I, that this was comfortable. Did you try yeah. it on? Ooh, I don't want to put my best one of my best friends out there, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I got to tell this story. So at the time, I was working at a at a mattress mattress store. Okay, and we were like brainstorming on how we can make this thing comfortable. So we got a shoe from like Shoe Carnival or something. We carved it out, dremeled it out. And then we start putting like comfortable like samples like um, latex foam and like okay. all these materials. I didn't put it on, but you know, <laughs> we figured out it worked from you know Tito stepping on it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was the hardest part, um, trying to figure out how much was enough. Right. And to find out that is a hard nut to crack. It is. Trying to it make a comfortable pair of high heels, right? That's seven years. And we got the utility patent and the design patent. Wow. I became a, a an inventor from trying to crack that that code. And, and honestly, my wife was in a big high heel wear. And when yeah. we got samples, she wore that shoe all the way to the to the max. So the wow. The the comfort is on the inside. It's about six millimeters of, of poron in there. And then you have like the dual heel that, that mm -hmm. makes my Add stability. Yeah, so it worked. Interesting, interesting. Okay, now I got like, some questions. Now this might be a tough question for you, Jade, <laughs> which is, um, you know, I do think it's really interesting looking at the sneakers that you've designed. And it's clear that you're being very thoughtful about your color combinations. So um, one, do you have a favorite colorway? Like, do you, do you ever find yourself, um, coming back to sort of the same hues or do you take every project and start with your narrative and approach it from a different angle every time like how do you how do you bring color to your work i normally um sometimes it's a picture and sometimes it's just straight from uh grabbing some markers um one i actually have right here great animal crossing is one of my favorite video games and so one of my favorite characters is Lily. It's a little frog. Um, yeah. But <laughs> this is a shoe that I did. And it was from all my favorite colors was on her. And she was not only a frog, she was really cute. But um, <laughs> it, it was just this being able to see my favorite color on a shoe was really cool. So I kind of brought some of those colors into this as well. Yeah. My favorite color, which is teal. Um, and there's a light, really light blue. 
which yeah so i just love green so if like a kindergarten comes up and asks me what's your favorite color i'll probably say green instead of mint but <laughs> it kind of reoccurs yeah it always reoccurs um it's my favorite color and i always put it in some form of the shirt do you want to actually um continue with the word design do you know or do you have a dr dream of being something different it's not very clear, but I definitely want to. What? You it. haven't decided fully yet? No. <laughs> I, so um, all the things you do, Jay. I, I swim, I bake, I crochet, I um, color a play lot. I play, yeah. play three instruments. Um, I do a lot. I, I have a lot of um, talents, but <laughs> I it's not clear, but I do want to keep going with color. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, footwear design, I think it's really fun. It's one of my favorite things to do um, because of how many um, areas there are and how many patterns there can be and how much things you can add to something that you can actually wear um, that, you know, you can hold in your hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I love um, shoes. I'm not sneakerhead like my dad is, but I definitely love the co <laughs> color aspect of shoes and seeing all the stories and like one well you're clearly very creative <laughs> and you. you know when people ask me how i how i got my job did i always want to be a shoe curator well when i was your age a shoe curator didn't even exist so who knows what uh what the future will hold right like there's jobs out there that we don't even know about yet um and so i just want to continue with you for a second so i understand that you have led classes or that you also teach your colleagues basically or the same age group how how to um design sneakers how how is that how do you feel doing that it's fun i mean it's you have like someone that's your age so you kind of have the same mindset and the right. same ideas or if it's not the same ideas you can always collaborate which i think is another great thing with um, the class that we were doing. It's also meeting new friends, um, kind of, we saw a lot of kids busting out of their little bubbles. Oh, mm -hmm. I was as well. So I think that's <laughs> another thing that was also really cool, seeing so many kids actually sharing their art, um, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, yes. it, it, was, it was really fun um, just seeing someone else do the same thing I'm doing, like, we kind of had like our own team. It was it was really fun. I liked it. <laughs> now Jay was ever able to just like come in and just share her point of view. I won't necessarily say teaching, but it was more of inspiring. Mm -hmm. Um because she was able to like kind of articulate, you know, color blocking without actually using these technical terms that kids mm -hmm. can't really relate to. So it was just like bringing bring the level down to to their level and then mm -hmm. rising together. So she did an awesome job. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I do have a long list of questions, but um, time is starting to get shorter. And so okay. there are questions from the audience. So I'm going to turn and let other people ask questions, not just me. So here we go. OK. Um, so Jade, is there a particular design or shoe company that you would love to collaborate with in the future? Um, I feel that. And no, I haven't really thought about this question, but <laughs> that's like, the that's the joy of questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like um, Timberland and Converse. Converse is a big one. Converse is a big one <laughs> only because they have so many different types of shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many, they have so many different like types of shoes. Like you have like the one with the big soles, and you have the one with the really skinny soles. Um, as well as vans. Um, vans, I think, are really cool as well because they have so many different type of shoes that I could just pop color into. What I find so interesting, and I think it's the historian in me, is that you know the Converse All Star came out in 1917, and we are still wearing it today. Yes, yes. classic. It, it's, but I mean, that's really long. Like, talk about a design, man, that really lasts the test of time. Exactly. <laughs> It's incredible. Um, okay, so I don't know, maybe this is for both of you, but when going to design, do you have a particular theme in mind or an end goal, or do you just allow your creative process to work naturally? Oh, Either one of you that. Um, 
you know, it just kind of depends on, you know, what the task is, um, you know, mm -hmm. if we're just free sketching or just like coming in just to have some fun, you know, it, it could be a conversation of a what if or, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just letting your mind go free and not think about like the actual things you need to do. Um, right. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just, it's just better to just put the music on and just, and just let it flow. Um, Cause you never know like, the things that you see and that you kind of like soak in when you're just being naturally inspired. Um, we go on walks every day, yeah. nature. Um, uh, I love to, to look at birds and, and kind of kind of get that that inspiration from a color perspective because I'm not as good as Jade on color. So I got to find inspiration um, <laughs> from somewhere. Um, but yeah, sometimes this thing, um, I know Jade has her thing with the uh, Animal Crossing, yes. with all those mm. different characters. So yeah, those show up a, a lot. But I agree with my dad with he's saying it's depend dependent on the situation. Um, I mean, if there's a brief, then you always go by the brief, but you can always think about like out of the box. Mm -hmm. And but sometimes you can also um, just go freestyle, which I think is one of the most fun things to do because you can just grab color and then put it on where the pencil should go. Um, so yeah, I agree with my dad. With are you guys always designing? Like um, you can have a meal and colors show up <laughs> in the meal and it's like, this is a very interesting color. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I, I mean, it's mostly, uh, you know, Jade is, is, is multi, I guess just talented. So she's, she's in, you know, you hear her playing her saxophone or ukulele. She's just got a guitar. So it's just like a lot of a lot of other practices, but you know, I'm always hunched over at my desk trying to <laughs> trying to come up with the next thing. Um, yeah. Which actually leads to the next question. Um, as much as you can speak on it, what are some exciting projects that you are currently working on at Tim? Ooh, what can you reveal? I think is the I question. Can, I can reveal what we just finished up, um, and I had an opportunity to be a part of the the construct uh, 4.0 with Daniel Bailey and, and his team. And that was amazing. Um, like I was saying before, I'm not a big maker guy. So this mm -hmm. put me in the space that, that, that was challenging to kind of, you know, take, you know, what we what we already have and create something totally new. And, you know, just being inspired by all those talented um, designers and creatives that was around, um, it, it, it just helped me um, realize that, you know, everybody has room to grow and creating a community of people uh, we were we were all able to to create you know new new ideas that possibly could land on the shelf, but um, that was one thing um, that was just amazing. Um, a couple of other things are are they're pending. I have to wait to 2023. I got a lot of uh, cool things. I was able to come in um, at the right time. I, that was like the thing. Like everybody kept saying, "Chris, you came at the right time." And, <laughs> You know, we have a new president, Susie uh, Mulder, and, you know, Chris McGrath is such a, a good design um, lead um, as our vice president. And, you know, they've been pushing us and we've been able to push, you know, the brand forward with some of the, the creativity and some of the projects that we have coming, coming soon. Um, that's going to really, really um, shock a lot of people. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to take this opportunity to say that uh, I'm very excited that you were working with uh, Daniel, Daniel Bailey, and that our next salon in June will be with him, aka oh, Mr. Bailey, right? right? Nice. So, um, so I'm very excited to, to do a salon with him as well. He's, he's incredible, as you know. Yeah, um, okay, so ha, this is a question, which is, has there ever been this is for Chris. Has there ever been a pinch me moment in your career? And if so, what was it? A uh, pinching? No, no, pinch me. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh, this is man. actually happening in real life. That happened so many times. Um, <laughs> that, happened, that happened a handful of times. You know, just, um, you know, I was just being with Dwayne, honestly, um, mm -hmm. was, was one of those things where, you know, this is a person that designed with Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan shoes. And that was just, you know, having the opportunity to be right up under him and designing together. And he's like asking me, what do you think? And, you know, we we able to collab. And, you know, some days I'm like, I can't believe I'm like sitting right here designing with Dwayne. Yeah. And, you know, it was so empowering 
um, you know, the special projects that we had, um, to, just to, to know um, how he thought. It wasn't just design, it was design and business, which is the hardest thing to kind of balance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I admired the most with him. And, you know, we, we were in like meetings with like Stone Island and I'm like, I can't be like, <laughs> do we need this meeting? Like, so it, it, it's, it happened so many times, um, even in, in, you know, on my independent run, you know, being in Florence, um, being in a, uh, Italian shoe factory and being like the, the first black designer in this in this shoe factory and getting invited to you know other factories uh like Gucci uh, we got invited mm -hmm. to, to the Gucci bag um, factory and you know after lunch they just invited us in and, and, and told me I can grab anything and Alicia had the best Christmas ever <laughs> <laughs> so it was like I mean it's a lot it's a good that, tension moment <laughs> It was definitely one of those things because the, the attention to detail that Italians have with their product is is ridiculous. And you know, they say, Oh, that that's the fact that you can you can add that, that's nothing. And it's like you try to find it, like, what's wrong with it? Like it's, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's been a lot of moments where there's just a lot of dreams come true. And that's why I, I share that affirmation about positive thoughts, because we we'll, you know, thoughts become things. And and a lot of things I've dream, dreamt about you know, came true. And that is a good segue to the next question, which is um, with your roots in basketball, would you consider designing a basketball shoe? And if so, which athlete would you like to do a collaboration with or design for? Ooh, so this is, this is, a, great, this is a great question. Um, so just this past uh, All-Star Weekend, Cole Anthony, he dunked in a pair of six inch constructs six inch Tim's. And, you know, I had that what if thought and, you know, uh -huh. so catched up a, a Timberland basketball shoe. So I would like to see that come to life. Yeah, that'd be very interesting. I would like to kind of disrupt the industry with with that that aspect and put that back on pole and, and, and see what that, ha uh, see what that does. Um, just because it's just disruptive, this creative disruption. It's all constant development um, thinking. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's one of those um, high goals that, that I, I, I hope to achieve. Okay, I'm going to direct this question to you, Jade, which is, what advice would you give to a young designer wanting to start their career in the industry? What would you say to another kid your age who wants to do this for their for a living? I would probably say, um, number one, grab a mentor. They are one of the best um you know things uh, to have a people to have um especially like suzette and anna um they were one of the huge mentors for me as well as my dad um yeah they're both mentors oh and melvin um but <laughs> they're they're all mentors for me um showing melvin showing like all these pieces that you can um how you can like have a um, picture and then put it into a shoe my dad um, showing me how I can find inspiration. Suzette um, showing me how I can grab color and put it into a shoe. And Anna just showing me um, where I can find inspiration. So all of those can lead up to one thing. Another, um, I'd actually probably say, yeah, grab a mentor and just keep going. Um, practice as much as you can. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Practice and... Mm -hmm. Uh, keep trying. I think that's good. Okay, well, you know what? We've hit four o'clock. It was pretty painless, wasn't it? It was painless. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I can talk to you anytime, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk to you too. And uh, um, I think that what we're going to do, uh, well, I know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do my formal summation. Um, if you guys stay on just a little bit longer, I'm going to go through the chats uh, and see if there are questions I might have missed. Um, and so we'll try to make sure that we answer everybody's questions. But I just want to point out that if you would like to stay connected to Chris, here's uh, how you can. You can constantdevelopment.com or Instagram. Um, please make sure to follow. Doing amazing stuff. Also, I highly, 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 highly recommend if you're interested in design, even if you don't want to be a designer, like this book lets you understand how to make shoes. 
<laughs> um, and so it's really an excellent, excellent book, beautifully illustrated and honestly, perfect. Uh, please buy it. Thank you. So want to say that uh, the next um, salon will be on Wednesday, June 29th with Mr. Bailey. His octopus shoe, it's incredible. It's here in the Future Now exhibition as is um, a pair of shoes by Dwayne Edwards. So Dwayne uh, Pencil is also part of this exhibition. Awesome. Uh, and Future Now is open. So if you're here in Toronto um, and want to see the exhibition, please see it. Also the book, which has a great interview with Dwayne and Mr. Bailey is uh, also available. Well, it's available currently in Canada. It will shortly be available in the States. And if you'd like to know more about what we do at the Battashi Museum, um, you can uh, join our e-news, hashtag BSM from home. We do tons of stuff from TikTok videos to coloring sheets. Um, to ask a curator questions, lots of stuff going on um, at the Battersea Museum, constantly online. And that was all that for that summation. Um, I guess I didn't formally say, I hope people are still here. Thank you so much guys for agreeing to do this. It was so nice of you to do this on a Sunday afternoon. I know you are both extremely inspiring and inspired creators. So thank you so much. And you're very welcome and thank you for having us thank you yeah. yeah we can't wait to visit this, uh the bottom yes shoe. you must let me know we have lots and lots and lots of shoes to look at <laughs> you can't wait okay so i'm just going to run through here and see um okay that question was moved over so it's tons of nice comments. I don't know if you can see them, like this is the best family project ever. Go Jade. Um, excellent showcase uh, of in inspiration. Um, a question for Jade. I don't know if, we, if I did ask you if there was a particular shoe com Oh yeah, I did. You said Converse. Well, it might be really interesting because they have so many different things. Um, I may have actually asked all the questions. So I think, I think you're off the hook. So now it's time for ice cream. Yeah. Now it's time for, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, highly deserved. And thank you again so much for joining me this afternoon. Can't wait to see you here in Toronto and keep designing. Can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you. Have a great okay. evening. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.